Funding for this CyberWire podcast is made possible in part by Duo. While remote work has been on the rise for years now, the recent rapid expansion of work-from-home culture presents new security challenges. It's Duo's mission to make application access more secure for organizations of all sizes. Duo's modern access security is designed to safeguard all users, devices, and applications so you can stay focused on what you do best. Give your organization the peace of mind that only complete device visibility can bring. Visit duo.sc slash cyberwire to sign up for a free 30-day trial. And we thank Duo for sponsoring our show. Charming Kitten is back and interested in medical researchers' credentials. Russian services appear to have been reading some U.S. State Department emails. Risk management practices and questions about the risks of growing too blasé about management. Recognizing the approach of an intelligence officer. Volumetric attacks are up. Joe Kerrigan examines a sophisticated Microsoft spoof. Our guest is Donna Grindle from Cardin on updates to the High Tech Act. More concerns in India and the U.S. about Chinese telecom hardware. From the CyberWire studios at Data Tribe, I'm Dave Bittner with your CyberWire summary for Wednesday, March 31st, 2021. Charming Kitten, also known as Phosphorus or TA-453, the well-known threat actor associated with Iran's Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps, has resurfaced in a cyber espionage campaign directed against Israeli and U.S. medical researchers. Proofpoint researchers conclude that the current campaign, they call Bad Blood, is fishing for credentials belonging to geneticists, neurologists, and oncologists— The campaign uses emails spoofing communications from Israeli scientists. Proofpoint is confident in its conclusions, but also admits that, as is often the case, attribution is based on circumstantial evidence. Bad Blood's objective remains obscure, as the record points out. Proofpoint told the record that the pandemic has produced a surge in collection against biomedical research targets. But the specialties said to be of interest to Charming Kitten, genetics, oncology, and neurology, don't bear any close and immediate connections to COVID-19 research. Nonetheless, the collection proceeds and continues to prospect senior researchers. Politico reports that Russia's holiday bear may have successfully accessed U.S. State Department emails. It doesn't appear that classified communications were compromised, but emails exchanged by Foggy Bottom's Bureau of European and Eurasian Affairs and Bureau of East Asian and Pacific Affairs were apparently being read in Moscow. Dark Reading has a summary of the current state of knowledge about the sunburst exploitation of SolarWinds Orion platform. The U.S. is still considering its options with respect to response, retaliation, defense, and deterrence in what the Atlantic Council characterizes as a strategic failure. The Council's report said, quote, The sunburst crisis was a failure of strategy more than it was the product of an information technology problem or a mythical adversary. Overlooking that question of strategy invites crises larger and more frequent than those the United States is battling today. The U.S. government and industry should embrace the idea of persistent flow to address this strategic shortfall emphasizing that effective cybersecurity is more about speed, balance, and concentrated action. Both the public and private sectors must work together to ruthlessly prioritize risk, make linchpin systems in the cloud more defensible, and make federal cyber risk management more self-adaptive. End quote. In particular, the report claims that U.S. government risk management was too heavy on management and too light on defense. According to the website Stuff, New Zealand's intelligence and security agencies have released guidance to politicians and academics on recognizing and fending off foreign influence operations. The advice is intended to be generally applicable and does not call out particular states since, quote, the foreign states conducting espionage or interference against New Zealand change over time, end quote. 
Much of the advice they give would be familiar to anyone who's undergone counterintelligence familiarization or training. Spies approach you, well, the way spies do, seeking to gain your confidence, offering inducements, and cultivating you over time. Whether it's done in person or in cyberspace, the process is much the same. Akamai warns that volumetric distributed denial-of-service attacks are increasing in frequency and severity. Some of the larger attacks recently observed have been conducted in connection with criminal extortion attempts. Unpatched systems don't simply become a non-issue over time. Vulnerabilities remain exploitable even if they fall temporarily out of fashion. Quoting Checkpoint Research, Leaping Computer reports that WannaCry ransomware is back and undergoing a minor resurgence. Checkpoint itself said, quote, Worryingly, WannaCry, the wormable ransomware that made its debut four years ago, is also trending again, although it is unclear why. Since the beginning of the year, the number of organizations affected with WannaCry globally has increased by 53%. In fact, CPR found that there are 40 times more affected organizations in March 2021 when compared to October 2020. The new samples still use the Eternal Blue exploit to propagate, for which patches have been available for over four years. This highlights why it's critical that organizations patch their systems as soon as updates are available. End quote. According to the Economic Times, India's government is moving closer to blocking the country's mobile carriers from using Chinese telecommunication equipment. New Delhi is concerned both about security and relations with China have grown more tense over recent months and about fostering the growth of a domestic telecom manufacturing sector. Chinese hardware manufacturers are also coming under renewed scrutiny in the U.S., Reuters says that a member of the U.S. Federal Communications Commission has called for tougher measures to exclude Chinese hardware from U.S. networks. Commissioner Brendan Carr called for an outright ban on equipment manufactured by both Huawei and ZTE. Current rip-and-replace restrictions on Chinese telecommunications hardware simply preclude companies from purchasing it with federal funds. Carr calls this a gaping loophole, since it's still permissible to purchase and connect such devices using private funds. He said, quote, It makes no sense to allow that exact same equipment to get purchased and inserted into our communication network as long as federal dollars are not involved. End quote. Carr also suggested that such restrictions would be overdetermined in any case. It's fully warranted by security concerns and also on the grounds that the U.S. should avoid trading in goods that may have been produced by forced labor. That second reservation is an allusion to Beijing's repression of ethnic and religious minorities, especially the Muslim Uyghurs in Xinjiang. It's time to take a moment to tell you about our sponsor, Looking Glass, a global leader in cybersecurity. Just a quick glance at recent news reminds us that cyber threat actors are becoming more sophisticated, organized, and deliberate. The reputational, financial, and operational damages from these attacks are increasing at a truly alarming rate. How is your organization ensuring that your defenses stay a step ahead of the cyber attacks? Looking Glass can help you tailor your threat intelligence to ever-changing attack vectors and adversaries. Tailored threat models help your security team work smarter, more efficiently, and proactively to optimize your cybersecurity investments. Find out how your organization can develop customized threat models at lookingglasscyber.com slash cyberwire. And we thank Looking Glass for sponsoring our show. Donna Grindle is founder of healthcare security and technology services company Cardin and host of the Help Me With HIPAA podcast. She joined me and my co-host Ben Yellen on the Caveat podcast to discuss recent amendments to the High Tech Act and how they might affect practitioners in the space. So the High Tech Act was uh, signed as part of what we know as the stimulus bill, the ARRA in 2009. And so it was a, it was the healthcare part of that huge stimulus bill. It included several different things, but the one big thing was funding to help push the healthcare industry towards electronic 
medical records because it was lagging behind on technology. And it became known at that time as the Meaningful Use Program. And if you were a certified EHR, so all of these vendors jumped into the market to become a certified EHR because if a hospital or doctor's office implemented one and then proved they were meaningfully using it, then they got funding to help pay for the cost of installing and securing and all of those things. So we're talking thousands and thousands of dollars that were rolling into healthcare to put these things in. Ah, is that why my kid's pediatrician and my primary care physician started using tablets all of a sudden? Yeah, really. And a lot of that <laughs> goes back to that. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it just, the whole industry started moving, whether they were the meaningful use program applied to them or not. Now the industry standard was electronic medical records. Once that kicked in, another part of it was saying, okay, we're going to stiffen up the rules for privacy security. We're going to add enforcement, which was never part of HIPAA, really. I mean, there there was, but voluntary compliance, we kind of call it like, it's like a speed limit. It's a really strong suggestion. Mm -hmm. And uh, so... They had changed that. That's where high tech added the enforcement. That everybody yells about 1.5 million today. That's where it came from as part of the high tech act. And that actual enforcement piece is what got the amendment in January 2021. Help me understand here and, and forgive how naive this question is, but do I have a master medical record? Is there one record or are my records scattered about? And if so, why don't I have a master medical record? No, you do not. They are scattered about, scattered to the wind. <laughs> and okay. uh, if that's why we always say you can cancel a credit card. You can't cancel your medical record. Hmm. So medical identity theft is a real problem. People don't understand it until it happens to them. But if I were to you know, get your information and go and file your insurance and say that I'm you at a hospital in another state and all of my records get in there and then you end up, say, in a car accident in that state at that hospital, they'll say, yeah, we've had them here before and they're going to use my blood type, my, you know, if you're not awake mm. enough to know it. So it can be quite dangerous. Mm -hmm. But that's why you can't cancel them because there's not one main one. The reason there's not one main one is that we don't have a main healthcare system. And on top, you know, <laughs> I want to log on to a website, Donna. I want to log on to a website. I want to see all my medical record for my whole life. Just let me log on to a website. Why is that so hard? Because <laughs> I don't know where your data is. I promise I can't find it. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> So, yeah, there's a lot really up in the air, and I'm anticipating between now and June, a lot's either going to get pushed out or it's just going to start happening because of the, you know, time frames that are built into the, the law with this. So, mm -hmm. it's going to be, mm -hmm. it's really interesting to see, uh, you know, because there's just so much to overcome. Our thanks to Donna Grindle for joining us. You can hear more of our conversation on the Caveat Podcast. And now a message from our sponsor, Linode. Whether you're working on a personal project or managing enterprise infrastructure, you deserve simple, affordable, and accessible cloud computing solutions that allow you to take your project to the next level. Simplify your cloud infrastructure with Linode's Linux virtual machines and develop, deploy, and scale your modern applications faster and easier. Get started on Linode today with $100 in free credit for listeners of the CyberWire Daily Podcast. You can find all the details at linode.com slash cyberwire. Linode has 11 global data centers and provides 24-7, 365 human support with no tiers or handoffs regardless of your plan size. In addition to shared and dedicated compute instances, you can use your $100 credit on S3-compatible object storage, managed Kubernetes, and more. Visit linode.com slash cyberwire and click on the Create Free Account button to get started. And we thank Linode for sponsoring our show.
And joining me once again is Joe Kerrigan. He's from the Johns Hopkins University Information Security Institute and also my co-host over on the Hacking Humans podcast. Hello, Joe. Hi, Dave. I uh, got some interesting um, research from the folks over at Area One Security. This is from their threat research team. And it's titled Sophisticated Microsoft Spoof Targets Financial Departments. Take us through what they discovered here, Joe. So this is actually a very advanced spear phishing campaign. First off, they one of the things they note is that they are going after people in the treasury organization of businesses and in the C-suite. And they're targeting assistance in those areas as well, like executive mm. assistants. Mm-hmm. A lot of CEOs, almost every CEO has an executive assistant, and these people are also being targeted. Right. And the idea is that these guys can um, get into, if they, if they manage to compromise somebody in the finance department's email, they can start sending out invoices to people uh, with payment instructions that reward the attackers, right? Mm-hmm. So send, send uh, wire this payment directly to this account, uh, and thank you very much. And then the victim company who is a customer of the, com- the compromise company then sends a payment to the attackers, and they make off with a, with a huge pile of money. Now, what's, what's interesting in this is the way these guys are going about it. They're using a very sophisticated phishing kit. They are registering domains that are Microsoft lookalike domains. They are registering them quickly and then executing these, these spear phishing attacks with those domains relatively quickly so that once you determine or it is determined by the security community that this, is, this website is part of uh, phishing infrastructure, it very quickly disseminates throughout the community. So they're, they're you know, making hay while the sun shines, if you will. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. One of the things is really interesting that they're doing that you don't generally see in phishing campaigns is they're setting up SPF records, which is the secure uh, sender policy framework. Hmm. These are DNS entries that are text records that say, yes, this domain is allowed to send email for us. Hmm. So a lot of times if you have, you know, if you can set up your, your receiving email to go, Let's check and make sure the SPF record for this is okay. If you don't have an SPF record, we're not accepting the email. Well, mm-hmm. these guys do have an SPF record for this. So it just bypasses that security check right there. Um, mm. You know, it's it's not I'm, not, I'm not saying that SPF records are, are garbage. Uh, you know, you should still use them. It's an extra step that people have to go through, but it's not that hard to get around, apparently. Right. One of the things that caught my eye here was that evidently these attackers are uh, specifically targeting new CEOs during their transition periods, which uh, that, that's fascinating. So on the social engineering side. Right. What, what, what's also interesting is the article says that they're targeting these new CEOs before public announcements have been made, right? Hmm. Which to me right. says they're already in somebody's email. <laughs> they, right. There's already some compromise going on. You think about it. I'm, I'm the new CEO, but nobody knows I'm the new CEO. Maybe my, my guard is not up as much as it should be. Right. Well, you're not going to be familiar with what stuff looks like at the new office, so you right. don't know what normal is. So you start getting all because part of any onboarding doesn't matter if you're the CEO or the you know the intern. Any onboarding process is full of uh, uh, an avalanche of documents. Usually, you know, absolutely. So it's, read right. this, sign this, and and you're not sure yet. You're not acclimated to what's normal. So. Right. That's a great opportunity for people to to swoop in and, and take advantage of that. Indeed, it absolutely is. Uh, one of the very convincing parts of this phishing kit is that they're sending out policy updates and security updates emails that are fake. And if you click on a link, you're taken to a page that looks like the login page for Microsoft. It even has your company logo on it and mm. your email address. And the way they do that is... You know, they put the email address into the link, so it's it's easy to, to pull it up. Uh, but the company logo is pulled from a from an online service that just displays your logo. So they know they they match your domain with the logo for your domain, and you get a really convincing login page. Right. So it looks like it might be some sort of enterprise account that's right. combining you know your logo with Microsoft's logo and exactly, again, uh, and and that's what happens when you log into um, Microsoft uh, three sixty five accounts. Yeah. So it's more convincing. Uh, another thing they're doing is they're using, uh, they're sending HTML pages uh, with JavaScript in it, obfuscated JavaScript. 
that hmm. just does the credential harvesting for you as an attachment. So if you don't get a PDF, you get it. You get the HTML page that also does all the redirects through the different sites. So you may not even be going out to a server. We've talked about this before. I can't remember if it was on the CyberWire Daily podcast or on Hacking Humans, where I, I, a malicious actor sends out a uh, an HTML page that then just submits a request. A, you know, submits the credentials you enter, and they, they they collect your credentials that way. You don't actually have to connect to a web server. Yeah. Well, it's an interesting report. Uh, definitely worth a read here. Again, it's the folks over at Area One Security uh, on their blog. It's titled Sophisticated Microsoft Spoof Targets Financial Departments. Uh, Joe Kerrigan, thanks for joining us. It's my pleasure, Dave. Thanks to all of our sponsors for making the CyberWire possible, especially our supporting sponsor, ExtraHop, leaders in cloud-native network detection and response. Learn more at extrahop.com slash cyber. And that's the CyberWire. For links to all of today's stories, check out our daily briefing at thecyberwire.com. And for professionals and cybersecurity leaders who want to stay abreast of this rapidly evolving field, sign up for CyberWire Pro. It'll save you time and keep you informed. Comes with everything you see here. Some assembly required. Listen for us on your Alexa smart speaker, too. The CyberWire podcast is proudly produced in Maryland out of the startup studios of Data Tribe, where they're co-building the next generation of cybersecurity teams and technologies. Our amazing CyberWire team is Elliot Peltzman, Peru Prakash, Kelsey Bond, Tim Nodar, Joe Kerrigan, Carol Terrio, Ben Yellen, Nick Vilecki, Gina Johnson, Bennett Moe, Chris Russell, John Petrick, Jennifer Iben, Rick Howard, Peter Kilpie, and I'm Dave Bittner. Thanks for listening. We'll see you back here tomorrow. And now, a word from our sponsor, ExtraHop, stopping advanced threats with network detection and response. Stopping advanced threats requires knowing exactly what you're up against. With 90 days look back, ExtraHop Reveal X is the only solution that shows you not just where the intruders are going within your network, but where they've been. ExtraHop Reveal X provides complete visibility across cloud, data center, and IoT, even when traffic is encrypted. Powered by cloud-based AI, Reveal X finds threats in real time, while powerful investigation and forensics capabilities allow you to respond 84% faster. See how it works in the full production demo, free online at extrahop.com/cyber. That's extrahop.com/cyber.